Hey everybody, welcome to the Lovecraft Show. My name is Mr. X Stitch. And I'm Marion. And we're very excited to have a devilishly handsome guest on today in the form of Tom Daly. Hey. Hello. Oh my God. We're just so excited. We've been excited about this for weeks. Oh, well, I want to know, first of all, if I may, um, you're beloved unto the nation. You're an idol to millions, um, consummate professional, absolutely lovely. How long was it? How long did it take you before you felt ready to sort of actively come out as a knitter? Oh my gosh, Knit, knitting for me is, is so funny. You might hear my son in the background of this because he's just woken up from his nap and my mum has got him and he's going to, might, you know, scream Bring out. Him in. He's, 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 about to, he's about to have a snack, so he might be quiet for that. <laughs> with Actually, with my knitting, I started it because I wanted to be able to do something that took my mind off of diving. And like it's for me, it was all about mindfulness and doing something that I could just completely switch off and relax and not really think and just... It was something that my husband suggested that I do because he's seen people on uh, film step sets doing it. So I was like, that's actually quite a cool idea. Why not? Maybe I'll make a scarf one day and, you know, thinking it would be fun to learn. Turns out I started learning, got completely obsessed with it and yeah. started off just making little patches. And I was absolutely terrible. You should see some of the photos of my first attempt at knitting. <laughs> horrible I was dropping stitches I was increasing every single row because I wasn't I didn't I never knew that there was another stitch other than the knit stitch and then when I was away diving I met other divers that just turned out they saw me knitting like oh I can knit I'll show you this and then I can knit and I can show you yeah so like there was coaches there was other divers there was a diver from Russia a diver from Australia and one of the coaches from China they literally were just coming and helping me and teaching me all of these different stitches and then with YouTube tutorials and all that kind of stuff I just loved it. We've had a lot of conversations on the show about ponchos. <gasps> I don't really know why but almost every time we talk about knitted ponchos but I feel like there's an overlap there for a nice natty way of keeping warm in between dives as well. Yeah I mean I made my son a poncho so I've I, seen it. it's lovely. Yeah. I because I had this yarn left over and I saw it bought it and then I was like you know what I'm gonna try and make something and it was like chunky and it was like easy and quick to knit and I was like I'm gonna try and make my first ever piece of clothing and the poncho just seemed like the easiest thing to do because it was all in one piece so it made it a lot easier to do and it was how I learned how to like pick up stitches to attach the hood and do all that kind of stuff so it actually was something that taught me a lot like at the end of every project that that I do I'm like oh my goodness, if I was to do that again now, I know so much more about how I could make it like a little bit better along the way. But each thing teaches me something different. I've actually started making a, a new thing, which is like on like quite chunky, like 15 millimeter circ- circular needles. Ooh, like super chunky. Yarn. And I'm doing like, I'm making like a, like a vest, but something that has, but the way that I'm doing it, I'm stitching in, um, is it stockinette is what it's called Stock- yeah yeah stockingette or stocking stitch yeah stocking stitch and then I change and switch it in the middle to make a T so I'm like <gasps> making like a little different pattern Yay! to make a T so I'm, I'm like half I'm halfway up the actual base of the T so I haven't gone across yet but it's I thought I'm gonna put that in there to see if I can do it and it's been oh do you know what I can see a Tom Daly collection coming <laughs> I'm, that's I'm, it I'm, that's I'm, it I'm, I'm excited to. I broke my hand in January diving and I hadn't started knitting then. I only, I started knitting in March. So I've only wow. been knitting for what? Yeah. Not, so not very long. A minute. So That's you've ridiculous. just started knitting in March and you've already made garments, a jumper and a poncho. And, and you're doing like knit hacking now as well. Yeah. yeah I've, been doing, I've been doing, I've been doing all sorts. I, that's kind of like an athlete thing is that once you do something, you're, you're in a hundred percent. There's no like, you know, half-assing it, it's very much like you're, you're doing it and it's like non-stop. And it, I, I don't know, like I started it, like I said, as a more of like a mindfulness thing and it then all of a sudden has become an obsession. Um, but yeah, like I've made hats and blankets and ponchos and jumpers and like every time I finish a project, I'm like, I need to start the next one. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm like, there's sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the evening off. And my, my husband Lance is like, the evening, why don't you just take the next day off and then start something? <laughs> I was like, I have to be something. And there was one time where I was waiting for new yarn to arrive and I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? 
I, I've got a project half finished and I can't do anything. Like, do I start a new one? So then I started making like little heart coasters <laughs> and things oh, like that. And I was like, lovely. just because they take like only like take 20 minutes to make. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just do one of those. And just like, I was just looking at all these different patterns. That's a proper knitter. That is, yeah. that is when you just can't switch it off. You mm. just have to start something new. Yeah. Definitely. Do you have to go to bed at a certain time or are you doing that thing, which is common, it's common with stitching as well, but you're just yeah. like, Oh look, I know it's half one in the morning. But. Yeah. It's funny because I'm such a, I'm such a early bird when it comes to um, bedtimes. I also get up, like my son goes to bed at seven and then he wakes up at seven. Like luckily, like he used to be, a not so great sleeper but he's now sleep trained and he's like sleeps the whole night which is amazing but I basically knit from 7 30 to about 9 30 each evening and I'll just spend a couple of hours doing it I wish I could do it for longer but I also get up because obviously my son is it's hard to do things during the day mm. when yeah. you know, like he like obviously I have to keep an eye on him when I go to bed I have to then be conscious of when I can train so I get up and train before he wakes up so I, I get up. <gasps> That's yeah, early. I know. So I've been setting my alarm at like 5.45, 6 o'clock, some more, depending on what my training session is, to get up do my workout so that at 7 o'clock when he wakes up, he because um, he's got one of those like little like sleep training lights so that when the sun comes up, he yeah, knows yeah. if he's yeah. woken up that he's time to. Fantastic. They're great, aren't they? Because you can knock those back to like 9 in the morning and you just be like, look, sorry, Robbie, the sun hasn't come yeah, up yet. Yeah, the sun hasn't come <laughs> up yet. Yeah, go back to bed. But he, it's funny, he, he'll, sta- he'll stand up and he'll look at it and then he lays back down. And then when the sun does come up, he's like, oh, morning, Papa, morning, Daddy, sun come, sun come. And I, was like, oh. Oh. I know, it's like so adorable to come into. But yeah, so I, I tend to actually go to bed quite early. And I wish, if it wasn't for my husband saying, okay, it's time to go to bed now, I would sit there and do it for hours. Yeah, if just one more row, just one more row. Yeah, no. absolutely. It's our 10th episode. I know, 10. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? What are we going to do? We're going to have an amazing giveaway and all people have to do... They need to either leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That's the one. But what happens if you don't have an Apple product? In case you don't, then Spotify, grab the link, put it on your social, leave us a snappy review if you choose... But be sure to track at lovecrafts.com in it so that we can find you, applaud you, thank you, and then add you to our list of millions of people who win a stash that's... what Even Tom Daly will be on that because it's got lovely wool in it. He's going to be in it, I can tell already. Yeah, I know he's going to do it because he'll want to win this because it's going to have in it... It's going to have a copy of your book signed. That's right. And even better, a copy of Debbie Bliss's book signed. Oh, my Lord. And what about if it's going to have like a tote bag, Lovecraft tote bag and all those fantastic pins? I think we should do that. And even though I know nothing on the subject, I think a selection of favourite yarns from Lovecraft, including paint box Debbie Bliss and Millimere. And do you know what I think would be quite good? Not that I know much about it, but I think maybe some really fantastic cross-stitch kits. I can't even believe it. So thanks to everybody for being part of it. Be sure to let us know what you think. Leave us a snappy review and we'll see you next time for another episode of The Lovecraft Lovecraft Show. Show.